Good morning, traders. This is my uh, morning video, real quick. Real quick, what we're going on here? We have done some repair work over the overnight session, and so what's happening this morning on our scan, pre-market scan? Uh, some big things. Nike, uh, Micron came out with the earnings up almost eight percent on their earnings this morning. A uh, little bit lighter volume. Uh, I would have liked to seen that as a volume leader on this news announcement. So I would not be surprised to see a little bit of a fade on that reaction to the earnings this morning. We also last night had Nike earnings, and that's not showing up on my scan here, but uh, they are up this morning as well, okay? A little bit, even lighter volume this morning on the pop. So be aware of that, okay? And that's two of the major things happening this morning, but we have a broad uh, short squeeze or uh, less, less bad news um, in the overnight session on the global equities. So we're catching a little relief rally here so far this morning. Quick rundown on my ES or the SPY. Uh, you know, uh, we have a gap that we had uh, from Friday into yesterday and we still have not completely filled that gap. Okay, uh, this, uh, the white line represents the uh, Friday close, the market maker move close. So I'm thinking we are going to rally probably into the uh, early morning session here, completely fill this gap uh, from Friday, and then we'll go from there. The blue line represents the uh, monthly pivot point. So we are on the bearish side on the monthly inventory as of right now, but the purple line down here represents the quarterly pivot. So, you know, so we're getting a little mixed read here uh, on the markets exactly where they want to go. So basically, you want to always be trading for a momentum trader. You want to be above the quarter and above the monthly for a bullish momentum uh, trader. So you're actually in a situation to where it's more of a chop fest, and it's a lower odds scenario if you're trying to do a directional trade. Typically, this type of a trading here, you, um, it, it, it's typically more advantageous to sell a premium, option premium and uh, you let the chop work to your favor and uh, you collect that premium as theta decay uh, comes off on a lot of your trades. So, or even calendar spreads and stuff, you know, whenever you start seeing um, a situation like we are currently in, okay? So uh, I have the one hour pivots on, uh, on my chart right here. And right here is a pivot point. It's a breakout pivot point. Whenever we were on, uh, uh, did this breakout run up in the markets. Let me hear. Ah, damn, darn it. One second. I hate this. Uh, so basically, um, like I said, that that is a pivot point. I identified it yesterday in the trading. So we did once we crossed above that pivot point. Uh, we've had a really nice bid to the upside. That was our bull bear cross. Uh, so we're trying to confirm uh, we uh, came down and uh, to our market maker moved low for the week and they saved it. And the moment we crossed back above that, it was just bullish all pretty much to the, in uh, most of the overnight session here. So uh, that is a major uh, tell here. Uh, so I identified that yesterday. So, okay. So using my market webs here, you can identify, uh, we have our market maker move high at 46.20 for the week. If we were to uh, continue uh, to the upside here. And uh, so right about that is our daily uh, monthly pivot. And then we have a volume node. So there's a lot of, uh, we have proven from last week, there was selling pressure that came in, you know, as the buyers and sellers met at this price point the sellers finally won out okay so now we're, we we haven't even gotten back into that area yet on uh the 4620 4630 area as a major inflection point where sellers might come back in again into the markets so basically if you're a seller you want to be selling at the highest price you can okay so you know if bear market rules are starting to uh, show their ugly head here the likelihood that they're going to try to let it rally back up to 46.20, 46.30, and then the selling pressure could possibly resume at that point, in my opinion. Okay, on our NQs here. So we came down, we looked below a two-week support area. 
and they saved it. And uh, we found out it wasn't until the very end of yesterday's session that we realized that uh, they were going to try to come in and say this. So it was going right into the 4 o'clock hour before you really could tell that they were trying to save the market. And uh, so basically we came into a two-week support area. And now right here, right now, uh, last week's low pivot, low print pivot on the one-hour chart, uh, we are fighting at right here, right now. So we're trying to cross back into last week's uh, inventory. Uh, so basically even the entire overnight session up to this point, we have not uh, really accepted prices into last week's inventory quite yet on our technology. So keep that in mind here. We are below our monthly pivot, above our quarterly pivot, okay? Similar situation to the uh, um, S&P, but uh, relatively weaker on uh, tech versus the S&P. And uh, like I said, we had a micron really, really good numbers last night. So I don't know how that's going to factor into today's session. So I um, just want to uh, get you, uh, alert you to this stuff here. So this morning we are above our daily pivot. Right now I'm not showing that one, but we are still below our weekly pivot as well. So, you know, we're coming into today, um, you know, in my opinion, you don't want to get overly bullish until you start, you know, you know, uh, you, each level that you get above, you get a little bit more moment, possible momentum traders. So like I said today, we are above our one hour pivots. We're above our daily pivots, uh, but we're still below our weekly pivot. So, and below our monthly pivot. So we've repaired some, but we haven't repaired all. Uh, so it's a mixed bag on our pivots, how they're lined up right now. So just keep that in mind. We still haven't even gotten into this. Uh, this was from uh, Friday's inventory. This is the highest point to do business. So what we saw, buyers and sellers were fighting uh, Friday, and we haven't got into that area yet. That can be easily rejected. That proved to be rejected as of Friday. So that, you know, I do want to point that out. That's the highest point to do uh, business on Friday's session. And uh, we still, or well, no, it's not Friday. Uh, it's uh, what time frame am I? Last week. Last week. I'm not, not Friday. But last week, that's the highest point to do business uh, uh, trading last Friday, last week. And that resolved to the downside, uh, you know, into the end of uh, Friday and yesterday. Okay. So we, we don't have much time to the downside. This thing could be a rocket ship back to the upside. Uh, but I do want to point that out. We result to the bearish side, you know, to start the week, of course. Everybody knows that. So, um, so that's basically where we're at here. But we are still below our weekly pivot point uh, as far as uh, the NQs go. Okay. Uh, we had mentioned it in the uh, room yesterday. We came into some very very critical support uh, down here on the IWM. And basically we saw the financials, especially the uh, regional banks, KRE, come into the quarterly pivot uh, yesterday uh, afternoon and immediately bounced off that. And that was our tell that uh, there was some, um, the bulls were coming in trying to buy the dip on uh, uh, financials and uh, some of the energy stairs too. And we're starting to see a little bit in the energy. I actually had targeted a uh, support area is around $60 on, on crude oil. But uh, the, the narrative out right now out of Europe, uh, they have an extremely cold uh, season hitting Europe area right now. And so they're having a shortage of energy again. And uh, I guess they're having to ship Oil back to Poland right now because uh, they need they need ener they need um, energy in Poland right now instead of sending it to the other side of Europe. So uh, so the, all that can be supportive for the IWM going forward. Some uh, critical things that I'm looking at here. So last week we just kept trending down into Friday, and uh, you know uh, early Friday morning on the on the IWM. So that was hitting the low pivot of last week. And then we rallied into the afternoon. Uh, so it did a little bit opposite of what we saw on tech there Friday. <clears throat> so this is our low, uh, our pivot low on the one hour. Uh, and once we got above that, uh, you know, it was sounding an all clear for the, uh, 
the shorts to cover. Uh, uh, for because bottom line is the shorts only want to be remain short as long as we have price discovery breaking below prior week's lows. And we were we were resolving back into last week's trading range. So this is this is the one area that seems to be repairing faster than most of the other sectors in the market here. So really a uh, nice recovery here. We're already back to the market maker move for uh, Friday's close of last week. So we've already rallied all the way back into Friday's close last week. So uh, nice constructive uh, bounce here on IWM. So we are right here right now uh, tagging our weekly pivot. So this is our bull bear cross on IWM. So if we can, if we could start accepting prices higher, then that would initiate some momentum traders coming back into the market. Uh, another layer of momentum traders coming into the market. So keep that in mind going forward here. Uh, this is our weekly uh, webs, and we're right there, the bull bear cross area. Uh, you know, this is the highest point where uh, traders uh, come in and <clears throat> from last week. So, you know, it's going to be a little iffy here because, you know, this could be a possible swing high scenario uh, if if we do get some selling pressure. Uh, initially, right now, it doesn't look that way, in my opinion, but um, it's looking pretty good here for the Russell here. And uh, we're also holding above... Uh, uh, a two-week support area too, as well, on this IWM. So you know, keep things in context. Uh, we are below the quarter pivot on IWM, and we are below the monthly pivot. So, in my opinion, we're just getting a, a much-needed short squeeze on IWM here. But you know, in in the Intermediate time frame, IWM is still a much worse chart pattern than what we're uh, uh, than uh, all the other indices. Okay, so you're still trading down here around the 215 area. So you know, from a, from a longer term time uh, perspective, of course, IWM is uh, much more broken. So you know, all we could be seeing is a short squeeze initially this morning. But I don't, you know, I always get nervous whenever we're below our quarter pivot. You know, uh, so just keep that in context going forward. Okay. Uh, so basically, I got my booster shot. I got a headache, sinuses, and I'm aching all over. Uh, so uh, uh, if I do any type of trading, it's going to be paper trading. So, uh, you know, uh, bottom line is, uh, given where we're in relation to the pivots and stuff, it's I think this is a much higher risk environment to try to do a directional uh, trade. Uh, so just, just keep that in mind going forward here. Uh, like the video if you like it. Uh, try to mark it below there before the video runs out here. And then uh, please leave comments below, stuff you're seeing and stuff like that. Like I said, we're going into Christmas. Volume should start dropping off here. Um, you know, we might be into that area of the Santa Claus rally. I don't know. Um, bottom line is... COVID outbreak is everywhere. My brother's in the hospital with pneumonia. He's too sick to even text us. He'd been in there for two days, and he, we haven't even heard anything from him. That's how sick he is. So, <laughs> you know, it's 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 pretty bad. So, uh, and all the hospitals here in the Midwest are filled up. So, and it's only going to get much worse because we're just now starting the Omicron outbreak here in the United States, and that's supposed to spread. Uh, that variant is supposed to spread like wildfire. So. This is going to be uh, quite interesting. Thanks for listening to my video.